I'll say this. Here's how we got three different Batman universes at the exact same time. Let's travel all the way back. A, a more simple time. Summer 2012. I was going into my junior year of high school, and there were some big movies that were coming out that summer, and none that I was more excited about than a little movie called The Dark Knight Rises. It was the epic conclusion to Christopher Nolan's masterful Dark Knight trilogy, and yes, I am the biggest stand of those movies. Do I think Dark Knight is the best of them? Of course, obviously, it's maybe my favorite film of all time, but I think that is the best comic book series ever made, and looking back on it, it's amazing to me that Christopher Nolan, especially considering what he's done since then, Academy Award winner Christopher Nolan, we got a Batman trilogy from Christopher Bleep and Nolan. Amazing stuff. And The Dark Knight Rises was very successful, maybe not as successful as its predecessor, The Dark Knight, which was a classic film that changed its genre. But that same summer, just a few months earlier, we got a movie from Marvel called The Avengers. And the reason this is important is because that was the first domino to fall. That is the moment in which studios finally came to terms with what they have to do with comic book movies. It's very bizarre that we have been seeing superhero and comic book films for decades at this point, but it wasn't really until the Avengers when they had the formula figured out. People want to see these characters coming together, and DC had the ability to do that. The problem is they had just finished their overwhelmingly successful version of the Cape Crusader, and it was time to pass it on to a new vision. And they had a perfect opportunity to do it. In 2013, we saw Man of Steel. This was Zack Snyder's interpretation of the character of Superman. And it is a bizarre film. It's not a movie I love. It's not a movie that I hate. It's a movie where I think its strengths are its flaws, and its flaws are its strengths. It is so drastically different from any other Superman that we'd seen, which is a compliment. And its detriment is that it is so drastically different from any other Superman that we've seen that it feels not like Superman at a lot of points. But the one thing I will give it credit for is that it was very self-contained. That was not the case for the next film that was going to be coming along. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. This is really when shit started to hit the fan. This was DC saying, hey, we want to compete with Marvel. We want to create a universe that is every bit as fun and unique and awesome as the Avengers universe. The problem is Zack Snyder was in charge. And I don't want to put it all on one guy, but Zack Snyder... He's not a big idea, plan things out guy. He's a, hey, let me put slow motion into this shot to make it look cooler guy, you know, and no disrespect to him, but I think a lot of his comic book movies kind of stink. Now, I love 300. I think Watchmen has its merits and in some ways was ahead of its time, but what they were trying to do with the DC Cinematic Universe was catch up to Marvel. Instead of taking their time the way Marvel did and telling solo stories before leading up to the big team-up movies, they went in reverse order. Hey, we made Man of Steel. Next up is Batman vs. Superman. Then right after that, you're going to get a Justice League movie with maybe a uh, World War I uh, Wonder Woman movie sprinkled in throughout. So kind of a lofty goal, and uh, they swung and missed. Batman vs. Superman which they expected to be one of the biggest films of all time, was not only a critical flop, but underwhelming financially. Yes, it made money, but it didn't do the gangbuster numbers that the Avengers films had done. And this was the worst thing that could have possibly happened to DC at this point, especially the character of Batman. They didn't know what to do. You have Ben Affleck in this role. People liked Ben Affleck as Batman, but these films were not being particularly well-received, and DC panicked. And so with this Justice League movie, Zack Snyder goes out, Joss Whedon comes in, they cut that movie to shit, and they re-release a cinematic cut theatrically that is drastically different than what we'd seen, and not good at all. And people really didn't like it. And at this point, and not only did people not like it, it didn't do very well financially, which the moolah is kind of all that matters here. So the one Batman universe that we had set up was kind of kaput. Yes, Ben Affleck did eventually come back to finish off Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, but ultimately, that was left to the wayside. So... What the hell was coming next? Well, Matt Reeves came along and said, hey, I want to reboot Batman. I directed Cloverfield and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes, and I kind of know what I'm doing. I want to make a Batman movie. And Warner Brothers said, shit, sure, yeah, why not? I mean, it's not going to be connected to anything, but here's the problem. Warner Brothers is very desperate at this point. They needed a hit. They needed hits critically, and they needed hits financially. And so, similar to The Dark Knight, maybe they turned to a man they didn't fully understand. Now, thankfully, Matt Reeves knew what he was doing. But at the same time, you had Todd Phillips the director of The Hangover in old school, who said, yeah, I, I kind of want to take my take a run at making this Joker script that I've been working on. Again, not connected to anything. So the Joker movie comes out in 2019, and I had relatively low expectations for it. And obviously, I had a legit attachment to the Heath Ledger version, and you know, we saw what Jared Leto did with Suicide Squad. We can forget about that. But I was watching it, and much like many people who saw the film, 
I was kind of blown away by its boldness. And the Joker film ultimately ended up being both the best and worst thing that could have happened to DC. It was the best in the sense that it bought them time. It was a massive success, a billion dollar film that not only did well uh, financially, but won two Academy Awards, including Joaquin Phoenix, who won Best Actor, becoming the second person to play the Joker to win an Academy Award. Hiller Gutendaughter also won an Academy Award for Best Original Score. Joker was a huge film, but here's the problem. It was just supposed to be this one-off thing but billion-dollar movies get sequels. They're going to back the dump truck up of gold to make sure that Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix come back for a sequel. At the same time, we have Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves who dropped their film, The Batman, in March 2022, which was also very critically well-received, very financially well-received. The Batman rules. It was a great, great movie. The problem is both The Batman and Joker are grounded in this sense of reality, which I love, but they are not two films as realistic, quote unquote, as they are, that you feel like could be connected to each other. And from a timeline standpoint, it, it wouldn't make any sense at all. So what are you going to do with this Batman? What are you going to do with this Joker? Can you connect them to each other? No. Can you connect them to Superman? Absolutely not. There's no way that that gritty, realistic version of Batman could exist with a, a guy in a red cape flying around saving people. So James Gunn comes along and says, hey, I want to reboot the DC Cinematic Universe. The Flash film is going to be the end of, uh, of the original DCEU that I'm taking over. I know some people have their thoughts about the Flash movie. I think it's a, one of the worst movies ever made. Like I, I dislike that movie the more I think about it, and I know some people enjoy it. That's fine. But that was the that was the nail in the coffin. Well, technically, Aquaman 2 was the nail in the coffin. But if a movie comes out and falls in the forest and nobody sees it, does anybody really remember it happening? I mean, gee whiz. Does anyone remember Aquaman 2 coming out? It came out like five months ago. It's, I think it's on HBO Max right now, but it's me. I didn't see it, much like the rest of the world. So then James Gunn says, I'm going to make a Superman movie. It's going to be called Superman Legacy, though I think it's now just called Superman. And that will kick off a new, brand new DC universe that will have Batman and Superman and Green Lantern and all these characters coming together until we finally get a Justice League movie done right. But here's the problem. You have three different Batman going on at the exact same time. You have Matt Reeves' version with Robert Pattinson donning the cape and cowl. You have the Todd Phillips Joker universe, which features a young Bruce Wayne who you would assume at some point becomes Batman. Maybe not in this universe, but you would think. And then you have James Gunn kicking off his universe. So what do I think of all this as somebody who loves Batman? Because in general, I think comic book characters – they are fluff, and that's not even meant to be an insult. I like fluff. Cotton candy tastes pretty good. The one character that I think is an exception to that fluff rule is Batman. Batman is like a Rorschach test. He can be interpreted so many different ways. I think we've seen that cinematically. Even though it's the same character, you can't tell me that Christopher Nolan and Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher and Zack Snyder's visions all line up with each other despite the fact that they all – feature the character of Batman. I'm open to different interpretations. The problem is there's two different ways to really interpret Batman. Now, of course, there's many different ways to go about it, but I think there's kind of two ways that you draw a line in the sand. Number one is what Nolan did and what Matt Reeves did. Gritty, realistic, grounded in reality, very raw, very, you know, could this happen in real life if somebody were to do that genuine feeling? And then there's the more fantastical, which hasn't done particularly well cinematically. The more fantastical is characters like Mr. Freeze or Poison Ivy or Clayface and or, or the characters like Superman crossing over with Batman. That more fantastical version of Batman hasn't hit yet. Now, James Gunn is going to try to kick off that universe, but it's a juggling act. And I wonder with people claiming that there is something of superhero fatigue right now, though I would argue it's more Marvel fatigue. You have stuff like Invincible and the boys on TV that are doing very well. The Batman did very well. People only complain about oversaturation when the products themselves are no longer quality products. Nobody complained about oversaturation with Marvel its first 11 years. It wasn't until Marvel put, started putting out products that people didn't enjoy when we were like, yeah, this is way too much. So at some point, and I don't know when it's going to be, at some point, one of these movies is going to take a hit. Whether it's good or not, the audiences eventually will decide this is just one too many Batman films. And it's kind of this weird game of Russian roulette. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be the James Gunn universe? Is it going to be the Ro Matt Reeves universe? Is it going to be Todd Phillips' Joker universe? I don't know. They have delayed the Batman part two uh, indefinitely, I, or at least I believe until 2026. I think part of that is they want to make sure that D James Gunn's DC universe gets off the ground, which is disappointing for me because I love what Matt Reeves did. But at the same time, as great as though that movie is, it's kind of this weird, like, bastard stepchild of the DC universe where it's not connected to anything, but it's also just a really good movie. 
I want to see sequels to really good movies. That's why I'm excited for Joker 2. We saw the trailer for it last night. It looks pretty insane. And I'm excited for the Batman Part 2. It, I think it'll be really good. But the one that they're banking on is the James Gunn vision, which, while has the potential to be the most financially successful with the crossover, is probably also the biggest risk. So anyway, that's how we got three Batman at the exact same time.